SDXL 1.0 is here. Check out the new GitHub Copilot Trust Center, build your own app with GPT-3, React, and Copilot, and a pick of the week that's like totally radical. All that and more on this episode of The Download. Welcome back to another episode of The Download. I'm your host, Christina Warren, Senior Developer Advocate at GitHub. And this is the show where we cover the latest developer news and open source projects. Please like and subscribe. So this week, my shirt, or shall I say, my crew neck, is from the Taylor Swift Eras Tour. And that's right, this is the coveted navy blue crew neck that is only available at the show or for a ridiculous markup on eBay. I was actually at the show in Seattle night too, and look, I'm not one to brag, but check out my seats. Those photos actually came off of my phone. It's, it's amazing. Six of you actually care about this, and to those six, I thank you for being awesome. But uh, enough of that, let's get into this week's news. So first, I guess I should mention that Twitter is now X or 10 or, look, I don't even know. The mascot Larry is no more, and now we're stuck with like some generic Unicode X, Okay, like I don't even have anything pithy to say about this, just billionaires. Moving on to some more exciting news. This is a pretty AI-packed week, uh, what with summer and all. So let's start out with a great post on the GitHub blog from my girl, Gadesha Care, about how she used Next.js, React, and GitHub Copilot to build an application that can tell her the nutritional value of any recipe. And I really love this tutorial because she takes you through every step of the process and shows how she was even able to use um, GitHub Copilot to debug uh, various errors. And it's a really great guide and it's a really smart app idea. So give this a read if you're looking for some inspiration. Um, I've got a link to the blog and uh, Kadesha's GitHub repo for her sample project in the show notes and the description down below. And speaking of GitHub Copilot, over the last two years, we've had a lot of questions from individuals and organizations alike about how GitHub Copilot works under the hood, as well as questions related to privacy, security, compliance, all that stuff. And because this is an evolving space, those questions and answers are evolving as well. And this is why I'm super excited that GitHub is launching the GitHub Copilot Trust Center to provide transparency about how GitHub Copilot works and to help organizations innovate responsibly with generative AI. And the GitHub Copilot Trust Center will live in our resources section on our website, um, alongside answers to a number of common questions about GitHub for Enterprise. And then within that resources page, um, enterprise team Teams can find and navigate the GitHub Copilot Trust Center based on the topic that their questions or concerns fall under. And so those topics will include things like security, privacy, IP and open source, accessibility, and questions about the labor market. And um, this is from our, our chief legal officer who you know, notes that trust is an essential part of the developer experience, and I totally agree. And I personally think that if AI is really going to be as transformative as many of us think that it will, that trust is paramount um, to these new tools um, as well. And so I'm glad to see initiatives like this. And I've got a link um, to the blog post outlining the new GitHub Copilot Trust Center and a link to the Trust Center itself in the show notes and the description down below. All right, let's talk about large language models. All right, so last week, Meta announced Llama 2, that's two, um, and in just a week, we've already seen a ton of cool things pop up around it. And one of the best parts of Llama 2 is that um, it's something that modern desktops and, and laptop computers can actually run locally, provided you jump through some poops. And this can be especially useful if you want to train or tune the model for your own needs. And so over at Replicate, Zeke has a really great blog post outlining how to run Llama 2 locally on a variety of device types, even your smartphone, which, yeah, that's that's a real thing you can do. So some of the projects that Zeke calls out include uh, Llama.cpp, which is a port of Llama in C, C++, that works on Mac, Windows, Linux, as well as Olama, which is a Mac app that makes it really easy to run Llama 2 on your Mac with very little hassle. Uh, but this is a really great blog post. I've got it linked down below, as well as uh, some of the GitHub repos for Llama, CPP, and Olama. And speaking of Llama 2, Stability AI, who is the team behind Stable Diffusion, they released their own tuned version of Llama 2, dubbed Free Willy 2, which I love. Um, and like Llama 2, this is open access, but Stability AI and Carper AI Lab, they finally tuned it um, with a new supervised fine tune in the standard alpaca format. So um, it might be a little more performant, I'm not really sure. But I'm gonna link um, to the blog post where you can find the model um, on Hugging Face, because it's really cool to see some of these tuned models um, already be out. 
But the real news with Stability AI is that they released SDXL 1.0 this week, and the Stability AI team calls this quote, the next iteration in the evolution of text-to-image generation models. And it's gonna follow the limited research-only release of SDXL 0.9, and Stability AI says that the full version of SDXL has been improved to be, quote, the world's best open image generation model. And according to the, Stab the Stability AI blog, SDXL 1.0 is one of the largest parameter counts of any open access access image model as 3.5 billion parameter base models and, and a 6.6 .6 billion uh, parameter refiner. You can get access to this in Stability AI's um, clip drop tool. The weights of the models and their source code are on Hugging Face and GitHub, naturally. And uh, the SDXL API is uh, being released as well. And then Dream Studio and other front ends have been updated with support for it too, which is really cool. It's really hard to believe that Stable Diffusion came out just under a year ago, especially when we look at how much has changed in the generative AI space since then. And I really look forward to seeing uh, what, what images uh, and what tools people build with the new SDXL 1.0. And so I've got links to the Stability AI blog post, the GitHub repo, the model on Hugging Face, all that is down below. And that's gonna lead me into this week's Project Spotlight. Each week I highlight a GitHub project that has sparked some joy in me. And this week I wanted to give a formal shout out to Invoke AI. And Invoke AI started off as one of the first well-tuned and maintained forks of Stable Diffusion. And it's evolved into its own community-driven toolkit that's aimed at both enthusiasts and professionals. It has a really great web front end. It's optimized to run on GPUs with as little as four gigabytes of RAM. And the latest version 3.0 already has SDXL 1.0 support built in. Uh, in my opinion, if you are looking at a way to self-host your own version of SDXL or, or any of the image um, uh, generators, um, this is probably the best place to start. So I wanna give kudos to the team behind this project and on the 3.0 release, and I've got a link to the GitHub repo, the docs page, and all that stuff down below. And now it's time for my pick of the week. Okay, so last week it was all about Barbie, a fantastic movie, I might add, but in just under a week, another movie based on Toys of Our Childhood is going to hit theaters, and this is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem. And so I kind of wanted to share two things of, of corporate promotion here. So first, the corporate synergy, our friends at Xbox are giving away some custom TMNT Xbox controllers that apparently smell like pizza because there's a pizza scented diffuser attachment. I don't know, guys. You can enter the contest by retweeting or, or retinning, whatever we're calling it. Uh, the contest, I've got it linked down below. I don't know if I really want my controller to smell like pizza, but I do like the design. But the bigger news is that they found the zombie kid. You know, you know, the guy from 2007, you know, from YouTube fame. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. He still likes turtles. Check it out. We just got out of a screening for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mutant Mayhem, and I'm with my friend, the zombie, Jonathan. Looking good. Jonathan just got an awesome face paint job. What'd you think of the movie? I like turtles. All right, you're great zombie. Good times here at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem, opening in theaters August 2nd. Also, how has it been 16 years since the I Like Turtles meme? I mean, I feel old. I feel really, really old. Um, let me know your favorite Ninja Turtle in the comments down below. Mine is Leonardo, uh, but I want to hear yours. And uh, give me your thoughts on, on that or of any of the other stories we covered this week. That's gonna do it for me. If you liked this episode, please give us a thumbs up on YouTube to help feed the algorithm gods. It helps us out. And subscribe to GitHub's YouTube channel for all of your nerd needs. See you next time.